Y'all know what's going on. It's time for another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker. Today, today I got a special guest, y'all. I got Big Fridge on the mic with me. You know what I'm saying? This brother here went to Hillsborough High School. He was an outstanding athlete. When I say that, listen to me, y'all. He was highly recruited by Tennessee, Ole Miss, Michigan, Oklahoma State, Mississippi State. That's just to name a few. TSU was in there. You know what I'm saying? But in 2008, y'all, 2008, his life took a tragic turn for the worse. Now, I'm going to shut up because I know how y'all lie. You tell me to let the, the guests talk. I'm going to let the guests talk. I'm finna let this brother tell his story from A to Z. And I want y'all to listen to it. And if you like it, share it and hit him up. Let him know what you think. Because I also think the brother got a book out or is getting ready to come out. And I'm going to let him tell you about that. And I'm going to make sure that I got the link to where you can get that book in my in my in uh, on my YouTube page. So you can click on it and go get that book right when it comes out. right. So anyway, let's just get to it. Big Fridge, how you doing today? Man, what's happening, fam? I'm doing good. My pleasure, bro. Man, good to hear your voice, man. Good to hear your voice. Now, look here, man. I'm on. I'm on. Go on and let you talk, man. Break everything down from beginning to end. Share your story and whatnot, because I think it's one of the most compelling stories that I've ever heard. Right. But start out by telling everybody what your life was like growing up and what life was like, you know, going to to high school and being highly recruited by all of these uh, colleges, man. Go ahead, bro. Yeah, man, first of all, I want to thank y'all for having me, bro. Uh, thank you for show, man. And uh, no problem. like you said, everybody called me Big Freeze, man. My government name is Calvin Bryant. I'm a junior. Uh, grew up in a parent, uh, two-parent household, man, from South Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, had a good upbringing, bro. You know, I had a good father in the house. I had a mom in the house. I had two sisters. Um, grew up in South Nashville in the pride. Man, I had seated uh, with sports off the top. You know, that was, that was really my bread and butter now with the school. Uh, later on, I attended Hillsborough High School uh, while I was an all-state, all-city, all-region mm. uh, football player. Uh, I was a team captain, uh, rushed for over 50 touchdowns, 3,000 yards throughout my career as a fullback. Uh, I was highly recruited uh, in high school uh, from the schools that you named. And, you know, uh, I ended up going to Tennessee State University. You know, people say, why Tennessee State over all those big schools? Well, uh, the game before the state championship, my senior year we won the state championship, but the game before the state championship, I broke my ankle. So that limited my options, being that they, they could recruit all over the country. So, you know, TSU showed me some love, and I wanted to stay at home, you know. But staying at home came uh, costly, you know, like when you uh, – a guy in the community that everybody look up to. You right down the street from the house. Sometimes things can go wrong when you make the wrong decision. So uh, I played a couple years at TSU. Uh, it's a 2000, uh, and I uh, left the team. That's when my decision making kind of got kind of iffy. And uh, in 2008, I uh, got caught on a drug free school zone with a friend of mine from the neighborhood. Mm. Wore a what do you say, bro? You go ahead, bro. I'm listening. To you. you got caught in the school zone with what now? Yeah, I got caught in the drug-free school zone with a friend of mine from the neighborhood, you know, one of the homeboys that wore a wiretap on me. You feel what I'm saying? And he wore it on me on three different occasions. So right as I was dealing with him on the three different occasions, I wasn't aware that I was, I had sealed indictments. But they came back with sealed indictments. They didn't get me directly after the transactions. And they came to me and uh, arrested me. Uh, my bar was like 350000 So, you know, I go from being a college athlete, well-respected in the community, to... You know, having a three hundred fifty thousand dollar bond on a drug free school zone. Little did I know, it was bigger than just a drug free school zone. They had been watching me for my involvement with a street organization called the Gangsta Disciples. Okay. Better function development. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And I feel like I, my impact uh, in that and my leadership would cause the uh, Metro Police Department to have a a, a deal. Uh, really have a opinion about me they want to get me off the streets. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, they, they wanted um, to get you. They wanted to get you. Yeah. Yeah, so when I decided not to cooperate, when they asked me to cooperate, that's when they brought up the drug free school zone charges, like you can face this amount of time or this and that. So I eventually said I went from uh no felonies, never been to jail a day in my life, to uh facing fifteen years at a hundred, bro. I went to trial, I got found uh uh 
with a mistrial the first time, less than three months later, they took me back to trial, and I was found guilty of a drug-free school zone. I was sent to prison. I started off at Charles Bass Correctional Facility. Mm. Uh, time in 2009, I, I was in the penitentiary. 2010, the May floods hit. You know what I mean? In Nashville, it was a big flood. Yeah. So they shipped people off, and I got caught up in that roundup. A few months later, and I went to a West Correctional Facility. That's when a lot of things started to speed up, bro. You know, just seeing a real penitentiary yeah. and being in situations, man. You know, I mean, the decision making was crucial. I stayed down uh, at Northwest. I uh, stayed out the way a little bit and ended up getting to Lake County, eventually NRU, and made my way back to Nashville a few years later while I went to River Bend. And, you know, at River Bend Maximum Security, uh, you know, we had staff. That's why I was on staff, and you know, just just being at a prison where they execute inmates and the death roll is active and things like that, man, it was really life changing, bro. But even though I was from the hood, you know, I was real, I was stand up. You know, it's different, man. Coming off a of college campus and then yep. you on a you in a facility on de- uh, with death row inmates getting executed like every other every other month. They got somebody else up to get executed when they brought back the death penalty. Yeah. So you know. I'm, I uh, throughout this process, though, bro, I fought my case the whole time, bro. So, yeah. you know, I stayed from appeal courts to Supreme Courts, like a lot of brothers in there doing now. You know I mean, fighting your case. And I agree with that. Fight it, so you can't fight it no more. And, you know, I got turned down on every level for 10 years straight. And I finally got into the federal courts on my 2254, my federal hate. Yeah. And uh, Judge Crenshaw, man, he overturned my case, bro. So I ended up getting out five years early on a 17 year sentence. So uh, the DA from district attorney's office, they didn't agree with the school zone. By this time, a lot of people uh, was gone. The, the, the recent district attorneys, so the new district attorneys came in and said they felt like the drug-free school zone was wrong. And I was, uh, I was in agreement with them. So I got a, a plea deal for 10 out of 100 to say my time was served. So then I got out October 31st, 2018, and I was blessed enough to be my case on the federal aid. And once I... <laughs> out, man. You know, I just took it personal, bro. You feel what I'm saying? I feel like a real one go back and get those who need to help. So I helped fight the drug-free school zone as a free man. Even though I got out of ineffective system council, I went and fought the drug-free school zone, and to this day, we got that law passed. So now, when brothers are caught in the school zone, if the school is not open or not in service, the DA has the, uh, the judge has the right to overturn the DA and be like, Look, we're not going to send them to a drug-free school zone. So keep in mind that we rewind. When I served the confidential informant, it was at 6 o'clock at night and at 10 o'clock at night. So there's no way that kids could have been in danger in a drug-free school zone when they're not even in session. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, bro, I got out and I started my own nonprofit organization, Positive Inner City Kids. I became like a pillar in the community. I always on the news. Uh, yeah, that's good always stuff. in the newspapers, man, and things like that. And I fought for ju- uh, criminal justice. Uh, reform, and I still do to this day, bro. You know, I just try to be a motivation for those on the inside to let them know, man. You know what I mean? They can call you whatever they want is what you answer to, and they can give you the amount of time they want to give you is up to you to give it back. So, you know, I just want to be a, somebody these brothers I can look up to, uh, look at, not look up to, but look at and be like, they yes. can do the same thing I've done. You feel me? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I, I, I'm on that same path, and I appreciate you saying that, right? But let me ask you a question, though, as far as you know, because I, you know what I'm saying, I lived the lifestyle too, right? I was in rotation as a gangster disciple for many, many, many years, man. Right. And I, I retired in 08, you know what I'm saying? But I, some of the best brothers that I've ever met, you know what I'm saying, was during my time in rotation. And still to this day, you know what I'm saying, right. brothers that I, I politic with on the business. But here's the thing, man. How do you, how do you talk to those brothers that are... Uh, uh, still involved in the business, you know what I'm saying? People make their own choices, but kind of situations dictate that, you know what I'm saying? Right. But you might be familiar with this term we used to use back in the day, you know what I'm saying? GD crazy, right? You know, right. brothers all the way in, they fully committed. How do you, when you have an opportunity to talk to brothers like that, because I think a lot of brothers, you know, they feel like it ain't no hope for them. What do you say to them brothers, man, uh, to give them hope that, hey, it's going to get better? Well, to them brothers, you know, I, you know, we we were, we was a group of individuals that come together as collective whole. So, you know, we come together as collective whole. You know, we pushing the business and we pushing the laws and policies of it. 
But you know, the everyday life, bro, it's 2024 now, bro. Yeah. So we got to make adjustments that can put us in the right position as individuals as well. And sometimes that's your mind state, man. You know what I mean? Your mind state. It ain't always about, you know what I mean, what you claim or how this moving or that moving, man. It's hard to keep up in this world today if you don't focus on what you need to be doing. So, you know, with me, bro, I focus on staying out of the way. I carry myself in a fashion, bro. Even when I was a member of the organization, man, yeah. I'm not going to bring no heat to myself or the organization. Right. But I think a lot of that's just the right win away from those individuals who don't see no light at the end of the tunnel, who crash out and do this and do that because what we do as individuals, bro, reflect on us as a whole, bro. Yeah. So I've seen prison, and, and that's a bad position to be in, no matter what you is, how much you love it, that some can pop off that you have nothing to do with, and it can dictate the rest of your life, bro. I've seen brothers, you know what I mean, get a life for this org, and get a life for certain situations, but guess what? They mama's still out there struggling, and they parents, they parents struggling, and their kids struggling. So what I want to do, man, I want to create a new avenue without bashing the business, or bashing anybody, a part of anything, to yeah. let them know, man, sometimes you gotta focus on what's, what's around you, and what you try to get to, bro. And you know what I mean? Sometimes it might come with stepping away or whatever you got to do because it's going to be hard to do certain things when you already belong to yourself. It's the betterment of the whole world. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, I just had to be a, that individual that when I step out there, I couldn't play with it, bro. So what I mean, like I couldn't play with it. I had to come out with results. So, if brothers, if I stepped away from something and I ain't got results, when I when they see me, it's like, bro, what was you doing it for? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, so now when they look at me, man, I beat my case. I, uh, I, I was labeled as a, a leader of this organization by mm -hmm. law enforcement. Yeah. Now they look at me like a criminal justice reform person. Yeah. They look at me like I got, I got respect in my community. So I made them respect the growth and development part of myself. We were just growing as a man and, and, and developing into something that I want to develop into, bro. So, you know what I mean? Just telling them that, like, bro, you got you to gotta see outside the box sometimes, bro. I know we get tunnel vision because we got to survive in a, in a situation that we're in, but it's always outside the box and the way you think and the way you move, but it starts in that, though, bro. It does. It starts in that, because it, regardless of whether people want to say this or not, it's always clicks within clicks. What I mean by that is no disrespect, but you're always going to hang around this brother a little bit more than that bro, brother because you can relate to this brother more. Yes. So when I start surrounding myself with brothers who had the mind frame I had to get out and never come back, I start getting different results. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I do. But I, I do. always... I always accept people for who they are. So even when I was in leadership or whatever I got going on, I'm going to put everybody in the best position to win. You see what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I did what you see. What you're talking about, what I'm hearing is you lead by example. You lead by yeah. example. And that's, and that's what we need. That's what we need more of, right? That's what we need more of. Now, now tell me a little bit about, tell me a little bit about uh, what you do now, you know, with the criminal justice reform and... Right all the different things that you do. Give us a little bit more insight. You gave us a little taste of it. Give us a little bit more on how you do that, what the process is, and how people can get involved if they want to reach out and give you some assistance. How can they do that? Okay, so what I do now, I work full-time at a juvenile facility. It's with DCS Kids, uh, Department of Children's Services. Uh, so I work full-time with them because I felt like it's easier to point to the youth than it is to try to rebuild grown men. You see what I'm saying? So I wanted to get out here and catch our youth before they be in the position that I've been in, that you be in, and everything. So I got connected with the juvenile justice system, and I'm full-time mentorship, and I work full-time at the juvenile. So whenever they need me in different spots, I go places to try to save our youth. Now, on the adult level, I got with a group out of Washington, D.C. called Families Against Mandatory Minimums, right? Yeah. So... They was fighting cases with people in the feds and Tennessee and this. So I got deep into the law and legislation. So I started going to meetings. I started studying. And I learned, bro, that a lot of our people out here don't take, take things serious because they're not in them situations. But when we going to be sit down with these law libraries, we fighting things, we take things a little bit more serious. So I learned that pressure bus fights out here. So I started showing up at them town meetings. I started showing up at legislation, trying to change laws. Right now, I'm trying to put a push towards these gun laws. And uh, with fellas being able to carry again, I'm also doing a push towards uh, juveniles with life sentences and just trying to, man, get rid of this parole board thing and all that, bro. So, <laughs> you know, what I, I just stay in tune, bro. The same way I stayed in tune with things I didn't need to stay in tune with at first, now I take pride in staying in tune for our brothers that can't really get out here and fight for themselves. 
regardless of their affiliation, what their crime was, everything. I always felt like it should be brothers out here, black men fighting for the people that's being prosecuted more than anybody, and that's black men. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So with, I got a media plug where I can be on the news talking about laws and this, that, and the other. So I feel like with my platform and what I'm doing right now, I can help a lot of people. And, and really, bro, the, man, what I'm trying to build and how people can help me, bro, yeah. I'm trying to bring a team out here of young people that learn the law. And this, that, and other. So when our brothers are in position in prison, they can have some help from the outside. Because mm. we know, bro, the lawyers ain't doing what they're supposed to do, bro. All of us go to prison and we find out late that the lawyers didn't do their job. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, so we can build up the youth from high school to college to be real snipers when it comes to this law. A lot of people can get their case overturned. So, you know, you got the innocent project and all these things going on. We can create our own from within as well, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. So, so that's what I'm doing, man. Just out here fighting, bro. Just because I got out of prison don't mean that the fight is over. Okay. I feel like, man, we got to create a a, a, a a positive thing, some positive to bring other brothers home who've been over sentenced and mistreated. And our people are the only ones getting treated like that, bro. That's real. That's real. Now, how can they get in touch with you? How can the people that want to help you get in touch with you? Or you might have that parent out there that has a young person in their life that they love that might be going astray. Is it any way they can get yeah. in touch with you so that you can talk to them? So Yeah, uh, I got my, uh, I got my uh, social media. I'm on the Calvin Freeze brand. That's why I do a lot of work at on social media and Facebook. I'm on uh, uh, airplane going up. Hold on one second. Okay. Well, I do uh, social media on Facebook. I'm on the Calvin Freeze brand. And on Instagram, I'm under uh, 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 one team Freeze. That's the number one team Freeze. And TikTok, and uh, I'm under one team Freeze as well. So okay. you know any. Anybody get their families to reach out to me, anything, man, I'm there. I'm willing to answer questions. Anybody's family's got questions about that. Because a lot of times, bro, our families don't really understand certain things. But sometimes we do take somebody out here to give them the input or uh, how to do this and how to do that. I'm yeah. working on getting another building, bro, where I can have an address that these brothers can write me at. Mm -hmm. If anybody want to help, we have a website. Uh, it's under construction. It'll be back up in a couple of days. It's uh, Positive Inner City Kids. Dot org. So that's the name of my organization. Okay. okay, now listen, let me let me ask you one more thing, right? Because I don't want to hold you up too long. But I want to know, doing, what, what's up? I heard about a book, man. Is the book coming out? The book out, bro. The, the book, book out. is out. Hold up. Wait a minute. I ain't got now. I ain't got now. See, I need to get one. Uh, I, got, I got to give it to you ASAP, bro. I got to give it to you ASAP right now, man. I'm the best seller of hard copies in my Barnes & Noble, bro. You know, uh, my, my book is on Amazon, yes. Barnes & Noble, uh, also my own website, www.calvinfreezebrand.com. But, uh, that, that, man, I'm talking about, bro, it's such a blessing, bro, to, like, just sit back and be out here and your book be on Barnes & Noble. <laughs> and I got a book sign. I got a book sign coming up at Vanderbilt, Barnes & Noble, April the 14th. So, you know, I'm just putting that positive vibe out there that any brother right now sitting in that field, or going through it on the outside, man. You can do anything you put your mind to, bro. Man, that is great, man. That is great. I got to give me one of those books. I got to give me one. It's called Both Sides of the Story, bro. It's called Both Sides of the Story, bro. Both Sides and, you know, of I was the Story. Blessed, I was blessed enough a month ago. I went inside Riverbend Maximum Security and talked to the inmates in there, bro. And to be able to get out of prison and come back in prison the right way. Yes. And talk to the prison about what to do and how to do it, bro, and give that input in that game, bro, that was priceless, bro. That was a moment that I'll never forget. I also went to the women's prison as well, so I was a part of both of their Black History Month programs along with the juvenile. And that's beautiful stuff. That's beautiful stuff right there. We need more brothers like you out there, man, doing your thing like that, man. Because I know, you know, I talk to my son every week, and he tells me about you right now, because I didn't even know y'all was talking like that, right? But he talks right. about you in glowing terms, right? And he's like, man, Big Free is going to shake it, man. He's going to make sure things is right. But look here, bro. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day, man, to sit down and do this interview with me, man. I really appreciate everything that you're doing out there, and I appreciate you taking time. Is there anything else that you want to say to my listeners, you know what I'm saying, before we go? Man, I want to say, man, I want to thank you again, big bro, man. I mean, I got much respect for your son and you as well, bro. 
And uh, just let, let let you know, bro, I want to let you know that, man, the world has turned into, like, man, the internet, man, social media, so much going on, bro. What you doing this podcast, bro, it's dope, bro. I seen on uh, the YouTube other day the Shug Knight doing one from, from like, what his situation is. Yeah. So, man, I feel like this can turn around at any time, and, bro, you can blow through the roof, bro. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And it's just dope right here, man, because they give us a platform that done went through certain things. Because everybody's talking about criminal justice reform. Yeah. Everybody's talking about prison. But why not give it, get us right there from the people who done really been in the belly of the beast, bro? You see what I'm saying? Yes, right. We're going to knock a time before you take over the game and other brothers find your lead. Because one thing you got, bro, documentation be conversation any day. <laughs> and for what you done went through, bro, and what we all done went through, these dudes on the internet can have a million followers, but they really don't even know what they're talking about. Yeah, but you yeah. got to come get it from the experts. We're the experts at this, bro. And if people like you taking that, that step forward, bro, and giving us that platform, that, that's what's up, bro. I'm 100% in. I'm sharing whatever. Putting yeah. it on my page. I respect it, bro. You feel me? I appreciate that, bro. I appreciate that right now. I really want to thank you for doing that, man. And I'm going to get at you again. Look here. Everybody out there, man, I want y'all to share this episode with everybody that's on your platforms and go get the book, right? This has been another episode of Doing Time with Joe. I'm your host, Joe Baker, and I say peace, y'all.